Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about vintage perfumes that you can still buy today. So about a year, a year and a half ago, I created this video, but I only had a small collection of vintage perfumes, but now my collection has grown. So I wanted to redo the video and share with you all of the other vintage perfumes that you can still buy today. Buy today. So I'm going to go through my collection in no particular order and explain the perfumes that I have and when they were released as well as the notes. So the first perfume on my list is 4711 and this is a traditional German cologne and it was produced in cologne since the year 1799 and has been the same formula for over 200 years and it's the original cologne water. It's a really nice light refreshing cologne invented in Cologne, Germany in a house with the number 4711. And it was actually originally developed for medicinal purposes. And all the ingredients are still top secret today, but I can give you some of the notes. And they are, the top notes are bergamot, a lemon, orange, and neroli. Heart notes are rosemary and rose. And the base notes are musk and woody notes. And I really like this cologne. It's unisex, so it can be for male or female. It's very light and it's very refreshing. It kind of, yeah, you can smell the bergamot and the lemon. I really like it. It's nice to splash yourself with it when you get out of the shower or the bath. It's just like a really light, refreshing cologne and it's not too overpowering. And another similar cologne, and this is almost the American version of 4711. This one is Florida Water. And it has a citrus base with a shifted emphasis on sweet orange rather than lemon and neroli in the original 4711. And it also has spicy notes including lavender and clove. And the, the name of Florida Water refers to the Fountain of Youth, which is said to be located in Florida, as well as the flowery nature of the scent. And Florida Water was introduced by the New York City perfumer Robert I. Murray in 1808. In 1835, Murray joined by David Trumbo Landman, and the firm became Murray and Landman. And in 1861, it became Lamon and Kemp. The company states that their product, now sold under the Murray and Lamon brand, still uses the original 1808 formula. And the current label is also a slightly modified version of the 1808 original. And Florida Water, similar to 4711, is also a unisex cologne suitable for both men and women. In old Victorian etiquette manuals, warned young ladies against the offensive impression made by a strong perfume, but Flora Water was a cologne recommended as appropriate for all, along with sachets for scenting the linen and fresh flowers in the corsage. Large quantities were also used by barbershops as cologne and aftershave. In the 1880s and 1890s, Murray and Lineman Florida Water was advertised as the richest of all perfumes and the most popular perfume in the world. Like other colognes of the era, Florida water was valued for its refreshing and tonic nature as well as its scent and could be used as a skin toner or a body splash. It was also used as toilet water by adding it to the bath or wash water. And I really like Florida too. It's definitely similar to 4711. It's just slightly different. It's very fresh. Again, I like to splash it when I get out of the shower and you can use it on your linens and like spritz your bed with it or your towels or just even spritz the air and walk through. It's really refreshing even in the summer. And next on the list is Chanel number no. 5. Chanel number no. 5 was the first perfume launched by Coco Chanel in 1921. The scent formula of the fragrance was compounded by Russian chemist and perfumer Ernst Booth. The design of the bottle has been an important part of the product's allure. Coco Chanel was the first face of the fragrance appearing in the advertisement published by Harper Bazaar in 1937. The top notes are bergamot, lemon, and neroli. The heart notes are jasmine, may rose, ylang ylang, iris, lily of the valley. Base notes are sandalwood, cedarwood, oak moss, vevedir, amber, patchouli, musk vanilla, and I really like Chanel Number no. 5. It's such a classic perfume. I recommend it for everyone if you're looking for one iconic fragrance that you want on your vanity. And next on the list is Blue Waltz. And this was a popular scent in the 1950s. And this perfume was launched actually in 1927. And it says, What treasure moments from your past will spring forth when you open the bottle of Blue Waltz? 
The same sweet and spicy perfume as the one you once dabbed behind your ears as a teen, Blue Waltz evokes memories of high school sweethearts, proms, and bopping to the jukebox. Share a bottle with a young friend and let this delightful scent become part of her memories too. So this was a very popular perfume for teens in the 50s. And it has an interesting scent. Um, it does kind of remind me of what I would think teenagers smelt like in the 1950s, if that makes sense. It's also very affordable. I believe you can buy it at Walgreens and the Vermont Country Store, and I'll link those below. And next on the list is Evening in Paris, and this one was created by the same perfumer that created Chanel No. 5, and this is Ernst Buch. And it is called Evening in Paris, and the French perfumer created this for Bourgeois in 1928, established in Paris in 1863 to manufacture makeup and face powders. Bourgeois has been making perfume since 1900. Evening in Paris was originally sold in a cobalt blue bottle designed by Jean Hilou. The scent was discontinued in the late 1960s and revived and reformulated by Chanel in the early 1990s. The exquisite fragrance of Evening in Paris Romances the senses and sets imagination and beauty roving hand in hand. Its loveliness sets the pulse of romance. And it's considered one of the world's most romantic fragrances. The top notes are sunny apricot, bergamot, peach, green notes, and violet. Middle notes are rose, jasmine, ylang ylang, and lily of the valley. And the base notes are amber, musk, sandalwood, and vanilla. And I have the newer one that I bought at the Vermont Country Store. And I also bought a vintage set on eBay of eating in Paris. I'm not sure of the exact date of this one. Could be even the 40s or early 50s. Let me know if it looks familiar to you. And the next perfume on the list is Miss Dior and this one was launched in 1947 by Dior for the new look. And it's a feminine perfume by Christian Dior. And the top notes are Gardenia, Bergamot, Clary Sage. Heart notes are Jasmine, Neroli, Rose, Lily of the Valley, and Carnation. Base notes are Patchouli, Oak Moss, Sandalwood, Amber. And this one, there's also a new version that was updated later that's completely different than the original formula. So make sure when you go look for it that you look for the one that's like the yellow houndstooth bottle because the newer ones, it can be misleading if you look for it online, but I'll link it below. And the next one on the list is Nina Ricci, La Air du Temps. And this one was released in 1948. And it's by the French fashion house Nina Ricci. And its original production, the perfume was contained in a bottle designed by René Lalique. This perfume is considered one of the best selling perfumes of all time. And in the 1991 movie, The Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter identifies La Herre de Tomps as a perfume sometimes worn by Clarice Starling. And that is a little pop culture reference. And the top notes are bergamot, peach, rosewood, neroli, rose, and carnation. The heart notes are gardenia, jasmine, may rose, ylang ylang, orchid, lily, clove, and orris. And the base notes are musk, vetiver, benzoin, cedarwood, oak moss, sandalwood, and cardamom. And again, this is a really classic perfume. It's very fresh and feminine. I feel like it really stands the test of the time. It's not too musky and overpowering. It's one of my favorites. And another one on the list is Estee Lauder Youth Do, and this one's from 1953. And it is a feminine perfume by Estee Lauder launched in 1953 and it's a very spicy powerful perfume it's one of Joan Crawford's go-to perfumes and the top notes are spicy notes of bergamot peach adelaide and orange heart notes are clove ylang ylang cinnamon rose orchid cassie jasmine and carnation the base notes are amber frankincense benzoin vanilla patchouli oak moss mus and vetiver I bought this vintage inspired bottle. I really wanted to like this perfume. Maybe it grows on you. I've mentioned it before. If you like maybe put a little bit on and walk through it, it'll kind of morph to your body's chemistry, but I do find it to be a little bit strong and spicy for my liking. And next on the list is a Guerlain perfume and this is Misuko. And it's a feminine perfume by Guerlain and this one was launched in 1919. So it's a very old perfume. 
And the top notes are peach, bergamot, lemon, mandarin, neroli, lilac, rose, jasmine, ylang ylang, and clove. And the base notes are vevedere, amber, oak moss, cinnamon, patchouli, cedarwood, black pepper, benzoin, sandalwood, and musk. And I really like this perfume. It's quite unique. It's not too overpowering. And it really takes you back in time. And I believe Jean Harlow loved this perfume. And in 1919, Europe was fascinated by Japan and the culture from Far East. And this was the moment when Jack Guerlain named his new fragrance Misuko, which means mystery in Japanese, and symbolizes passionate and mysterious femininity. And the next on the list is Penhaligon's Blue Bell. And this one was released in 1978. And it has a citrus, hyacinth, and clove. And this is Princess Diana's favorite perfume. And it has citrus notes. Hyacinth, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine and Rose, Clove and Cinnamon. And it's a really nice, fresh, airy perfume. I really like it. And the House of Penhaligons is very old. I believe it was from the 1800s. And they have other older fragrances. This is just one of the newer ones. And next on the list is Shalimar. And this is one of my favorite perfumes from the 1920s. And this one was created in 1921 by the House of Guerlain. And it was re-released for an Art Deco exhibition in Paris in 1925. And it means Temple of Love. And it's an oriental fragrant with notes of bergamot and vanilla. And Guerlain is inspired by the story of Indian Emperor Shah Jahan, who created a beautiful garden called Shalimar to please his queen. And the top notes are bergamot, lemon, mandarin, rosemary. Heart notes are iris, jasmine, rose, patchouli, and vedavir. Base notes are vanilla, tonka bean, frankincense, sandalwood, musk, leather, to name a few. I really like this perfume. It kind of grows on you, but it's so mysterious. And I love the leather and vanilla base to it. I feel like it's also unisex. I feel like men could wear it too. And for some reason, when I spray this perfume, I swear it takes me back in time. And if I close my eyes, I can just picture myself in a speakeasy. I can like smell flappers. And it was really popular in the 1920s for flappers. It kind of just takes you back in time. I can't explain it. It must be the, the leather scent to it. You just, I don't know, it's really hard to explain, but it's one of my favorite perfumes from the 20th century. And next on the list is Fracas, and Fracas was launched in 1948, and then it was reissued in 1998. And it's an intoxicating Parisian-style fragrance, and it was known for its refined simplicity and as an object of desire for a woman worldwide. And Fracas is glamorous and comfortable, at the same time, modern and provocative. And this one's very popular in old Hollywood. I believe Natalie Wood loved Fracas as well as a lot of other old Hollywood movie stars. I actually plan on doing another video featuring the most popular perfumes in old Hollywood. And the top notes are bergamot, mandarin, hyacinth, green notes. Heart notes are jasmine, tuberose, orange flower, lily of the valley, white iris, rose, violet, and carnation. Coriander, peach, pink geranium. Base notes are musk, cedar moss, sandalwood, vetiver, amber, and benzoin. And next on the list is Flores London. This is a very old perfume. I have the lavender one, and the scent was launched in 1821, so this is really old. And the main notes are lavender, and I got this one for a Queen Elizabeth video. It also has a royal warrant on it. Marilyn Monroe loved the rose geranium Flores perfume. And the next one on the list is another Guerlain perfume. This is Valde New Wheat. And this one is named after a poem about an aviator. And the perfume is a tribute to a woman who liked to take risks. And this one was launched in 1933, so it's an older fragrance. And the top notes are bergamot, galbanum, petite grain. Heart notes are jasmine, narcissus, violet, carnation, and rose. Base notes are spices, woods, iris, vanilla, and amber. And the next perfume is another Gear Lane one, and this is Jicky. And this one was launched in 1889, so it's one of the oldest Guerlain fragrances. And according to Guerlain folklore, this was named after an English student whom Amy Guerlain fell in love with. 
It was in fact named for his nephew, Jacques Guerlain. It was the first abstract perfume as it wasn't reminiscence of one individual note and apparently the favorite of Sean Connery, so it is unisex. Sharon Tate also loved Jicky. And the top notes are lemon, mandarin, and bergamot. Heart notes are lavender, rosemary, basil, bay, orris, jasmine, patchouli, rose, vetiver, and cinnamon. Base notes are leather, amber, vanilla, sandalwood, civet, tonka bean, incense, benzoin, and rosewood. And I really like this one too because of the leather base notes as well as the vanilla which is similar to the Shalimar and I really like that it is unisex it's, it is very refreshing and light and I feel like it's actually quite timeless and the next one is Givenchy Lanterdi which was Audrey Hepburn's perfume it was actually created for her in 1957 and it's a French word for forbidden and is a delicate floral powdery aroma. It contains notes of jasmine, rose, violet, and the heart is a blend of woods and grasses. And like I said, this one was created for Audrey Hepburn who wore it for a year before its release to the public. Hepburn also became the first actress to become the face of a perfume. And there's also an updated 2018 version. I have the updated Couture one. And the fragrance notes for the updated one are orange blossom, jasmine, tuberose, vetiver, and pachili. I really like this one. It kind of has like a sweet smell to it. It's one of my favorite perfumes. And next on the list is Elizabeth Arden Bluegrass. And this one was launched in 1934 and then relaunched again in 1989. Top notes are lavender, neroli, orange, bergamot. Heart notes are jasmine, rose, carnation, narcissus, and tuberose. Benzoin, musk, tonka, and sandalwood are the base notes. And I don't really like this one personally. I find it to be a bit heavy. It definitely has an older scent to it. Um, it was very popular even in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And the next one is Carvin Ma Griff, and this is Judy Garland's favorite perfume. And this one was launched in 1946 by the perfumer Jean Carles. And the top notes are Adelites, Bergamot, Clary Sage, Galbanum. Heart notes are Gardenia, Jasmine, Ylang Ylang, and Rose. Lily of the Valley and Oris. Base notes are Cinnamon, Tonka Bean, Vevedair, Sandalwood, Oak Moss Musk, Benzoin. And again, this is more of a heavier fragrance. It's very 1940s. It's not one of my favorites. Next on the list is Taboo by Dana, and it's a feminine perfume launched in 1932. So again, this is another popular 1930s fragrance created by the perfumer Jean Carles and Dorothy Dandridge. I love this perfume. And the top notes are Italian bergamot, lemon oil, orange neroli. Heart notes are Bulgarian rose, ylang ylang, jasmine, absolute, carnation, vanilla, clove, narcissus, and clover. Base notes are patchouli, oak moss, benzoin, amber, musk, civet, cedar, vetiver, and sandalwood. And next on the list is Wind Song by Prince Machabelli. And this one was launched in 1952. And Wind Song is a feminine perfume with top notes of neroli, bergamot, lemon, mandarin, coriander, Orange leaf tarragon, heart notes are iris, clove, carnation, jasmine, yangling, rose, and rosewood. And the base notes are cedarwood, sandalwood, amber, musk, benzoin, and vevetir. And again, this one is not my favorite. It's more of a musky, heavy fragrance. And next on the list is Belle of Versailles by Jean Desprez. And this one was launched in 1962 and is Elizabeth Taylor's favorite perfume. I believe Michael Jackson also loved this one. Top notes are bergamot, lemon, mandarin, and neroli. And the heart notes are rose de mai, lily of the valley, lilac, iris, jasmine, ylang ylang, and leather. Base notes are cedarwood, sandalwood, vanilla, civet, benzoin. And again, this one's interesting. It kind of grows on you. I do like the bottle. It kind of looks very kind of regal and reminds me of Versailles. I do like it, and I think it's very unique. Next on the list is Giorgio Beverly Hills, and this one was created in 1981. And it was kind of for the affluent 
and it was kind of created for the affluent kind of 1980s lifestyle like in the decade of dynasty lifestyles of the rich and famous and falcon crest and the other rich people with aspirational lifestyles and the top notes are green bergamot fruit note orange blossom heart notes are tuberose gardenia ylang ylang and orchid base notes are sandalwood cedarwood musk amber moss and vanilla and the next perfume is Coquez Fleurs, and the history of this one, it was from 1912 by the perfume Hobigant, which was established in 1775. And this is a compelling perfume, and it's very significant and a historical fragrance because it contains several floral notes and is one of the first perfumes of its kind. And it was also discontinued in the 50s and relaunched in 1988. So the top notes are bergamot, tarragon, lemon. Heart notes are jasmine absolute, tuberose, lily of the valley, rose, ylang ylang, carnation, orange blossom, lilac. Base notes are orris, tonka bean, honey, heliotrope, vanilla, oak moss, absolute, sandalwood, civet, cedarwood, and musk. And another popular vintage perfume is Joy by Jean Patou. And this one was worn by Jackie Kennedy and it was created in 1929 as a reaction to the Wall Street crash, which had diminished the fortunes of Jean Patou's wealthy American clientele. Despite its elevated price and the depressed economic environment, Joy became a success and remained Jean Patou's most famous fragrance. Joy is a feminine perfume and the top notes are peach, leafy greens. Heart notes are rose, jasmine, ylang ylang, lily of the valley, orchid. Base notes are sandal with musk and civet. And another popular vintage perfume is Lanvin Arpege. And it's a feminine perfume which was launched in 1927. And the top notes are adelaide, bergamot, peach, orange blossom, honeysuckle, iris, lily of the valley, neroli, and clove. Heart notes are ylang ylang, rose, Jasmine, Mimosa, Violet, Geranium, Coriander, Base Notes are Patchouli, Vetiver, Sandalwood, Vanilla, Musk, Benzoin. And I really like this one. It doesn't smell too musky or overpowering. It's very fresh. It's one of my favorites. And the next fragrance is Vent Vert by Belle Mem. And this one was launched in 1947 and Brigitte Bardot wore this perfume. The top notes are orange blossom, lemon, lime, bergamot, gardenia, peach. Heart notes are rose, jasmine, lily of the valley, freesia, ylang ylang, violet. Base notes are oak moss, vetiver, sandalwood, sage, amber, and musk. And I really like this one. It's very fresh and light. It really translates today, so it's not too overpowering and heavy and musky. It's one of my favorite perfumes. And next is Guerlain La Hair Blue. And this one was created in 1912, so it's one of the older ones again. It was created by Jacques Guerlain. And the top notes are bergamot, lemon, coriander, tarragon, clary sage, neroli. Heart notes are Bulgarian rose, iris, heliotrope, jasmine, ylang ylang, orchid, carnation, and violet. Base notes are tonka bean, vanilla, sandalwood, cedar, musk, vetiver, and benzoin. And I really like this perfume too. It's quite fresh and light. And I like how old it is too. It's one of the older ones. Honestly, I love all of Guerlain perfumes. And I honestly, it would be hard for me to decide which one to choose. I feel like they're all so unique. And if you are a vintage perfume collector or connoisseur, I highly recommend diving into the Guerlain perfumes. And lastly on the list is Jungle Gardenia. And this one, is from 1932 and it was favored by the actress Barbara Stanwyck and it has a blend of gardenia, jasmine, a lily of the valley and other romantic notes and Natalie Wood also loved this fragrance. I really like gardenia. This one's so fresh and nice and this one's available at the Vermont Country Store as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any of these perfumes. Am I missing some? I know there's so many perfumes. Obviously, there's some that I'm missing, but hopefully I can collect more and feature them in another video. All right, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye!